Hello. Today I would like to discuss how we investigate children born with a cleft who are struggling with their speech and whom the cleft speech pathologists suspect have too much air escaping from their nose when they talk. I am James Seward, a paediatric plastic and cleft surgeon at UT Southwestern Medical Center in Dallas, Texas. In the last videos, we looked at why children born with a cleft can have too much air coming out of the nose when they speak, and that this is a type of resonance error known as velopharyngeal dysfunction, or VPD for short. In this video, I would like to discuss the speech imaging studies we do to work out whether a child would benefit from surgery to help with speech and to help decide which operation is the most appropriate for that individual child. Once the cleft team speech pathologists have evaluated the child and suspect that the child has VPD, they will usually recommend investigating the way the palate is moving during speech with speech imaging. This speech imaging consists of two imaging studies. The first is lateral video fluoroscopy. This is an x-ray test in which we look at the palate moving from the side as the child talks. Here you can see a girl looking at some pictures to keep her head still during the study and the machine that takes the x-ray pictures as she is talking. If we go back to the side view of the middle of the face, which you'll remember, the images we get from fluoroscopy are very similar. You can see the hard palate between the mouth and the nose and the soft palate behind. If we now look at the soft palate as this child speaks, you will see that it lifts nicely, making good contact with the back of the throat. This is normal movement and is what I aim to achieve. Here are some examples of how this imaging can show problems with this valve system. Here is an example of touch closure, where the soft palate just about reaches the back of the throat but not with enough force to act as an effective valve. Now an example of a small consistent gap and a larger consistent gap. And finally an example of a palate that really isn't moving well at all. The information from this study can help to show which type of surgery is most likely to help for the individual child. The other type of speech imaging is video nasendoscopy. In this study a small camera is placed into the mouth and the nose, and we can see the soft palate moving directly. It gives us images like this. Going back to our familiar mid-facial diagram, the camera is about here, and it's looking at this area, which means that on the picture the back of the throat is at the top and the soft palate is at the bottom. If we look as a child speaks, you can see the soft palate lifting against the throat and making good contact. This is a normal movement pattern. And here is an example of a palate that is lifting but not making contact with a large gap. An example of a palate that is nearly making contact but has a consistent small gap. An example of a palate that is just about touching but doesn't have the force required to create a good valve system. You can see the bubbles as the air forces its way through the valve. This study is very helpful to show differences in palate movement between the right and left sides and to show the speech mechanism in patients who have had a pharyngeal flap. For me, making a decision about whether a child would benefit from surgery for speech takes a team. The speech therapist evaluation is very important and the information from the speech imaging, video fluoroscopy and nasendoscopy shows whether surgery can help and which type of surgery is most likely to help the individual child. In my next video, I'll discuss the different types of speech surgery I offer. Thank you for watching, and if you would like any more information about me and my practice, please visit my website at www.drseward.org. Hi.